So with all the new AI tools out there that are coming out every day and bombarding us, I wanted to share some of the ones that I've been hearing great things about and that I've been trying out myself. Um, I got to start with, you know, the OG, the one that came out in November and hit the world by storm, OpenAI's ChatGPT. Coupled with this amazing AI for Education's prompt library, you've got a powerful tool. Like, look at all these uh, different topics they have, like rubrics. You can just go into the, the prompt, copy that, go into chat GPT, and change what they have here. So I'm going to put fifth grade, and I'm going to say solar system. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, format a rubric and a, we use a four point scale here for our standard space grading. So I'm going to just put that in there because prompt engineering, coming up with a really good prompt is so important. And uh, AI for Education has done a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And I'm going to put the link to that right here in this video, in this YouTube. But you can just take this, ask ChatGPT to put it into a format that you can copy and paste either onto your spreadsheet or your document, and you've got it ready to go, maybe with just a little bit of tweaking. But always read and double check whatever ChatGPT gives you. Um, you can also use Bing. You can switch. If you're on Edge, or even you can do it on Chrome now, you can go from Bing search to Bing chat, and it's the same type of thing. Um, I'm going to go back to my previous one and see how it does. I'm curious. It, it, the Bing chat runs on the uh, same generative AI model, the GPT, chat GPT. So it should be pretty similar. Oh, it's searching. Oh, that's interesting. And look, it's generating a rubric for me. Um, one of the cool things about Bing is that at the end of this, it should provide me with a list of sources. And there we go. Teachers pay teachers, Recampus, and five more. You can see where it got all its information from. And that is the nice thing versus ChatGPT and Bing Chat is to have that ability to see the sources, whereas ChatGPT has been known to make up sources when you ask it for sources. Um, another one is Google Bard. Bard.google.com will also uh, run a ChatGPT model and give you, here's just another example of a rubric. And this one does also, if you ask it something like I did an earlier search, War of 1812, and it got its information, it provided its source, and it was the Library of Congress. So that is really cool. Now here's the thing. Google, being very protective, Google Bard, if you're a Google school, 18 or older. I looked up Bing Chat, and Bing Chat, it, I think it, it, what I read was 13 or older with parent permission. Chat GPT for kids 13 to 18 years of age can use it with parent permission. Um, but if you are going to have kids using any type of AI, and it's in so many places, uh, this graphic here from Matt Miller, who, who uh, is the guy behind Ditch That Textbook, really helpful to use in class because it has a continuum from at the very top here student puts in a prompt like we did and then just turns in the rubric to us that uh is is one end whereas the other end of the spectrum is you give the kids a piece of paper and a pencil and they're generating the rubric just from their own knowledge no research being done whatsoever I did it with my kids uh, last year, and this was kind of the class agreement. And both my classes kind of had the same type of, of uh, answers. 
So at the very top, yes, that is 100% plagiarism, cheating, no learning required, uh, no thinking required. All the way to the very bottom, 100% not plagiarized, but then you're not learning anything because you're just using what you already know. So we came up with a plan of if we're going to use an AI support or a chatbot, these are the ways that are appropriate, not only to help the student still learn, but also gain skills they're going to need in this world of AI. Um, but if you do want a, a chatbot for your kids, I found this one last year, Mini Studio, which is made for kids. And you can see when I made an account here, uh, it prompted me to create my little mini studio avatar. I chose Dragon, and you could draw it yourself, upload a picture, or write a description, and it'll generate it for you, a, a image generator. Uh, but kids can ask it anything. Tell me about the War of... 1812. And I don't know why that comes to mind, because I'm not a history teacher, and um, I don't know much about the War of 1812, but it just popped into my head. Uh, so it, it's very brief. The War of 1812 was a conflict between the United States. But it talks to kids. Um, and I, I noticed some of the kids I had try this out last year, they got very friendly and attached with their uh, mini studio chatbot. Um, so we got to keep reminding kids, remember, this is a program. Uh, it's a lang language model. It's not uh, alive. It doesn't really have feelings or emotions. It doesn't think, and that's why it can hallucinate. It's just putting words together in ways that sound like natural language. Uh, and we also have to be aware of any biases that come with the data it used. So those are some ways you can um, engage your kids. Another thing for students is Google Slides now has this feature right here where you can describe what you want. And let's say if I'm wanting a dragon motif, European type, um, you can ask for whatever you want. And of course, the more details you have, the better. Uh, oh, I forgot to choose a style and it's still creating. Ooh, I, I, I want to do that. That's really cool. So there are some dragons, but what if I wanted it to be a dragon background? I could choose background specifically and then change the way my slides look. Um, ooh, those are pretty. So the choices you have here are you could have a, a photograph, vector art. Uh, you can use vector art to make logos. This is really nice and, and a, a feature that uh, I just heard about recently for Google Slides. If you're a Canva user, type in Magic Tool and it will come up with its beta where you just, what I did here is I uploaded our district logo and it generated these templates for me based on what I uploaded. So you can go ahead and start creating things even if you're not artistic uh, whatsoever. Also Adobe Express I'm hearing has a lot of new AI features. So these are ways that kids can be exposed to AI tools in the classroom that is totally appropriate for students. But back to teacher tools. Uh, Curapod is amazing, and the team of people who created and, 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 and market Curapod, they are the most wonderful people I've ever met. So cool. Uh, but you click on Create, and you can do sh short activities, but let's do Generate Slides. Let's say I want to do sixth grade this time. And I want to work on forces and motion. You can put in your learning objectives and your standards, but I'm just going to say NGSS forces and motion standard. And then you click on right there, do magic. Uh, if you've ever used Pear Deck or Nearpod, you're going to see some similarities with what it's going to generate. 
but it's doing the work for me. Here are the slides. It created 16 slides for me on the topic that I needed for the grade level I needed. Now, any of these slides, you can edit the activity and you've got polls, word clouds, kids can draw, uh, open question. Open question is really cool because when kids answer the question and the timer runs out, you display the questions and then the class votes. They get two answers at a time and they vote on which one they think is a better response to the question. And then at the end, it shows which responses got the most votes. This is great for classroom discussion. Another one of my favorite is the personalized feedback. Kids answer this, they submit their answer, and the AI, when you end the, the writing time or the timer runs out, kids get feedback from the AI, the Curapod AI. That way, kids know right away uh, if they got it right or what they need to do to make their answer better. I mean, this is just amazing. I haven't used it with kids yet. Totally looking forward to doing this, adding it to my tool belt. You know, I've got Pear Deck and now Curapod. I can add Curapod as another amazing interactive tool, one that I totally recommend. By the way, you click on present, generates a code, kids go to curepod.com, enter your code, boom, they are engaged in your lesson. Another one, you gotta try, Magic School AI. You can sign up for free. And by the way, Curepod, the free version, you can make unlimited uh, uh, presentations, slides, and activities. Magic School AI. For the free, you can also do a lot. And what I like about this, unlike ChatGPT, where you've got a blank screen here, and you're like, what do I do? This one helps you focus on, well, what exactly are you looking for? Oh, I want some AI-resistant assignments, and I want them for my ninth grade. Uh, ooh, let's do eighth grade. Washington State history. So look how quickly it's generating uh, ideas for an AI resistant assignment for eighth grade Washington State history. And it, again, these are not perfect, but you read through this, it'll get your creative juices flowing and save you the, the having a writer's block or a mental block. What do I do? And it gave me two ideas, uh, three ideas that you can choose here and, and check out. And look, you, you can increase the length, shorten, translate, summarize. This is just amazing. And the Reina is the AI coach that you can talk to and get advice from. I mean, if you are the only one who teaches that, you've got somebody to bounce ideas off of. So that's Magic School AI. Um, now, Diffit is another one that I've been hearing a lot about, and, and uh, it's really cool. So check it out. I'm going to do literally anything. But you could put in article URLs or any text or excerpt. But I'm just going to um, ask for one. So I'm going to go back to solar system, solar system, and specifically moon, earth, sun interactions, right? And I'm doing that for fifth grade. I'm going to generate resources. And it takes a while because look what it did. It has an adaptive, adapted reading passage that I could change the grade level. Um, so I've got a way to get some learning and information to my students. And I, we could read this, do a read aloud, uh, me to my class. But I can show the sources and it shows me with footnotes where it got his information from. Again, Unlike ChatGPT, this has a, a, a bit more trust factor in that it's getting, it's showing you where it's getting its sources from. But Diffit also created a summary for me. It picked key vocabulary words and defined them. I can add more and edit it, but there's more. It created a multiple choice 
a series of questions and I could click on show answers and it'll tell me which ones are correct. And it's got short answers, open-ended prompts, but there's more. Here's the great part. I can go to export, click on export to forms, and I am generating my Google Forms uh, quiz based on these questions. So I can read this to my students and then give them a quiz to check for understanding and make sure that they got what they needed. Then we can work more on the open-ended uh, projects and, and vocabulary. I can follow up with using quizzes or GimKit to make sure they get the vocabulary. But here's your Google Form already created for you. And it's got the passage right in there. So there's the questions. And just turn this into a self-graded quiz. Boom. You're set. I mean, these tools have just blown my mind. And that's why I'm making this video. Because just these, CurePod, Magic School AI, uh, Diffit, um, you know, Bard, Bing Chat, ChatGPT, blowing my mind, all the cool things we can do. And now if you add to that Google Slides, Canva, and Adobe Express, man, we've got great ways to make our jobs just a little bit easier and engage our kids all the more so they're learning and, and seeing how we can use AI to do a better job.